Hello, and welcome back to the second episode of Does God Love Me? This is a video series designed for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who are currently experiencing the challenge of not knowing whether or not God loves them. And I believe that this is a, something that we experience probably more than we'd like to admit. I mean, we're, we're scared to admit it. We're afraid of what other people might think of us if we actually say it. And, you know, maybe, maybe we're one of those people that we're expected to have these really strong testimonies. And right now, one of the things that we're struggling with is just wondering whether or not God loves us. And I, I know, and, and we're going to see in this video, that the prophets and the apostles have frequently taught of God's love for us. And the question is, how do we, how do we go from hearing the words that God loves us to more fully and more frequently experiencing that love in our lives? And so we're going to be looking at that. And what I have found personally is that there are three questions, and I, I guess these are magic questions, but just recognize these are things that have helped me. Maybe, maybe some will help you, and you could discard others, and you could find some others that work better for you. But there's, there's three questions that have helped me experience God's love for me more often in my life. And they're they're not set questions. You could see that I I kind of kind of change them every every once in a while. Anyways, one of the questions largely comes from President Nelson's talk Becoming True Millennials, and he gave this talk in 2016 when he was president of the Quorum of the 12 Apostles. And even though the target audience were millennials, certainly this message applies to all of us who have questions about whether or not God loves us. And we want, not only do we want to know what the right answer is, but we want to really embrace it and that we really want to experience God's love for us more fully in our lives. And so one of these questions could be something like this. How does God Heavenly Father, how does thou feel about me? And, you know, in, in relationships, when, when there's a relationship that's struggling, sometimes that crucial conversation needs to be had where we're just not sure, how does this other person feel about me? Is there, is there something? And a lot of times it is. A lot of times it's uncertainty about what's, what the other person is seeing and how the other person is feeling. And so sometimes we just need to ask and get that information. Sometimes asking this question too can clear up things. You know, maybe maybe it's you're asking someone, how do you how do you feel about me? How is our relationship okay? Is you know, those are we okay basically? And sometimes it's they might say something like, yeah, I I want you to know that I totally love you, but I'm just I'm just so stressed right now and I'm sorry that it might be coming across as seeming like I'm angry with you or something like that. Now, of course, I don't think stress is keeping God from from loving us or showing love for us, but at the same time, I think that sometimes we might have a misunderstanding with God. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe there's times where we misunderstand what it is that he's trying to show or teach us. And so let's go ahead and listen to this brief audio clip from President Nelson's speech. Therefore, my first recommendation is to learn for yourselves who you really are. Ask your Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ how he feels about you and your mission here on earth. If you ask with real intent, over time, the Spirit will whisper the life-changing truth to you. Record those impressions, review them often, and follow through with exactness. I promise you that when you begin to catch even a glimpse of how your Heavenly Father sees you and what He is counting on you to do for Him, your life will never be the same. 
so there's so much in that talk that I love. Um, you know, as, as, as I said before, if we need to ask, Heavenly Father, how, how do you feel about me? And we need to be careful. You know, I think, I think there's sometimes where people might get false impressions and, um, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be something like a voice from the past. I feel like you're not worth anything. You know, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how else to say this, but I think a lot of times we assume that what we're hearing in our minds or maybe from things that have happened in the past is also what God is telling us. And we need to make sure that whatever impression we feel is coming from God, we, we kind of check it with a doctrine. And it, d does, this, does this revelation match the doctrine, right? I think another thing too is that sometimes, and in particularly our culture today, really overemphasizes this idea of feelings. Now, I guess I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because as, as I've said multiple times already, just in these first two episodes, that I want to feel God's love for me more often. But I guess what I'm saying about that is that we need to be careful that our feelings are not always, our feelings are not always right, you know? Our gut isn't always right. Our, our emotions aren't always truthful. Sometimes they could be off. Sometimes they could be misdirected. And... So again, that when we ask God, how, what is it, how does thou feel about me? And if we get a response, it might be more of an impression or thought in our mind than in our heart. And we need to not discard any, anything, that we shouldn't minimize it. That if it's coming from God, then it is a sign that, that he truly loves us. The other thing, too, that... President Nelson talked about is that these kinds of things, these kinds of answers come over time. That sometimes it's, uh, at least in my own life, that is largely kind of like a puzzle. And that some days we'll get a, one piece and one day we'll get another piece. And all, over over time, we we might, you know, kind of kind of gain a better understanding, a fuller picture, if you will, about how God feels about us. But really, I, from, from President Nelson, it seems to me to be very clear that it's okay to wonder and to ask, God, do you, does thou really love me? And, um, you know, if we, don't, if we don't feel like we get the answer, if we don't get the experience, if we don't get the sacred grove experience that we want the first time, then keep trying. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that God is withholding his love. It just means sometimes we need to, like Joseph Smith and going out to the grove, sometimes we have to find our own sacred place in order to be able to receive revelation from the Holy Ghost. So that leads us to this next part. President Irene gave uh, an incredible general conference talk last time. Of course, you know, all of them were incredible, right? Uh, but October of 2023, where he is talking about the importance of changing, of repenting, and that these are the kinds of things that we need to do in order to experience the Holy Ghost and to recognize the Holy Ghost more often in our lives. Now, when we, when we feel God's love, it's most commonly sent from his his spirit the comforter or the holy ghost and when we partake of the sacrament we have the promise that if we fulfill our end that we'll always have his spirit to be with us but as elder bender uh excuse me i think i said bednar i did okay uh president irene taught is that there are things that offends the spirit and a lot of these things we might not be aware of. You know, it might be it might be little things. Um, you know, maybe maybe our negative thoughts, or maybe we have frustration toward a certain person, or maybe it's something even simpler than that. Maybe maybe where we need to get more sleep or less sleep, or maybe we need to eat better, or maybe we need to let go some things go right. So. 
we need to ask very specifically instead of just assuming it's part of this checklist. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything on this checklist, and so the Holy Spirit will be with me. We need to ask, is just just like before, you know, it's a relationship. It's a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Is there anything that is offending the Holy Spirit? And if so, what is it that God wants me to change so that I could feel the Holy Spirit more often? The other part, and I'll go ahead and play a, a clip of, of this talk that I really like, is that I think a lot of times in my life, I'm asking for the companionship of the Holy Ghost to help me with a certain thing. It might be to get a particular new job, or um, it, it might be to be more successful. You know, there's there's a lot of these kinds of things where I admit that it's largely about me. How can Heavenly Father, how can, how can Jesus, how can the Holy Ghost help me do the things that I want to do? And yet, as President Irene taught, we need to make sure that our primary focus in asking for the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost is that we are willing to do what God wants us to do. And when we're doing that, then we're going to put ourselves in those sacred grove experiences where we see and we feel God's love more often. Now, at the very beginning of this clip, listen to Elder Holland's quote. It is amazing. So here we go. As Elder Jeffrey R. Holland has said, Whenever these moments of our extremity come, we must not succumb to the fear that God has abandoned us or that he does not hear our prayers. He does hear us. He does see us. He does love us. That assurance has helped me when I feel distant from the Lord, when answers to my prayers seem delayed, I have learned to follow the counsel of President Nelson to review my life for opportunities to repent. If you want to receive the companionship of the Holy Ghost, you must want it for the right reasons. Your purposes must be the Lord's purposes. If your motives are too selfish, you will find it difficult to receive and sense the promptings of the Spirit. The key for me and for you is to want what the Savior wants. Our motives need to be driven by the pure love of Christ. Our prayers need to be, all I want is what you want. Thy will be done. So didn't you love Elder Holland's quote? So, so much there that is, uh, you know, so, so important to me. Every time I've, I've heard Elder Holland speak, you know, just, just strengthens my soul. And so, so grateful for that. So again, you know, one of the questions that we could ask Heavenly Father is, is, that, is there something that thou wants me to change? And we, we need to be careful. I, I think sometimes, well, well, let me just back up a little bit and share an experience that I had. A while ago, I was subbing for a Sunday school class and for youth of the church. And I went in and I asked them, I said, well, what kinds of things do you do you need to do in order for God to love you? And a lot of the common answers came when you pray and I said, okay, is there anything else? And well, yeah, fast. Okay, anything else? Okay, read the scriptures. And then I asked him and I said, so are all of those things necessary for God to love you? And we had a really good conversation about that, that a lot of times with, I think, within our culture, not in our doctrine, but in our culture, I think a lot of times we think we have to do things a certain way up to a certain level or a set certain standard or families have to look a certain way. We have to do certain things in order for, to really kind of earn God's love for us. And I mean, that's a, that's a 
rat race and a mousetrap all in one. You know, we will never be able to run fast enough to meet what we think are the standards. Because the truth is that God loves us unconditionally. We're his children. And so why do we do these things then? Well, it's, as I said before, it's we repent daily. We ask Heavenly Father, what is it that we need to change? Our primary goal is to feel the Spirit more often, to do what God wants us to do. But we're not, we're not seeking that. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not saying, oh, okay, um, you know, I, I have to do everything God wants me to do to be loved. It's really how do we put ourselves in that place, in that spot, that sweet spot, if you will, to where we can feel God's love for us. It's always coming. How can we feel that love, even, even when it's always there? And by daily repentance, those are the kinds of things. And, and asking God, okay, just like those crucial conversations before, what is it that I need to do to, to feel thy love more often? Or we could just say, what is it that thou wants me to do? I, one question may be better than the other. And I believe that God will help you understand which direction that you need to go on that. Now, this third question is really overlapping the other two. So maybe I should have talked about it a little more detail there. But what I have found is that... God often doesn't like to give me easy answers. That a lot of times he'll point me in places to where I will see God's love for me. I will be more likely to feel God's love for me. But I have to do the work. But again, this isn't about earning God's love. Rather than about the growth that Heavenly Father knows that we can experience by making changes in our lives. So we looked at earlier before, what, is, what are some things that, Heavenly Father, that thou wants me to change? Here it is, the emphasis is assuming, okay, I know that the, in the Tree of Life vision, that the iron rod led to the Word of God. So there's got to be something in the Word of God that's going to lead me to feeling the love of God more often in my life. A while ago, I was asking Heavenly Father this, this exact question, and I was really surprised by the answer. And the answer was that I needed to do more to study the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I just kept praying, okay, what, what, is, what does that mean? I, I mean, I, I've read the scriptures many times. Is, does thou want me to... Maybe buy another book that has to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And does it need to be LDS-based, or can it be by another Christian author? You know, I'm just, I'm just sending all of these questions because I'm, I'm seeing this as an opportunity to feel the love of God for me more often in my life. So I'm really desperate, and I'm, I'm like really asking a lot of questions. And finally, the answer came back, and Heavenly Father said, I'm expecting you to use your agency to fulfill my commandments. Now, that's something that we saw with Nephi as well, right? That he was commanded to go and get the plates. He didn't know how, and there was a lot of times where he failed in that process. And it was really frustrating. He had to deal with Lemuel, Lemuel as well. And some people might say, well, if God commanded him to get the plates, why didn't he just give him success the first time. And I, I submit that there's a couple of reasons. One is that God wants us to grow and to learn. And going through those challenges and using our agency is really the way to do that. But the other thing, too, is that a lot of times in the scriptures, the Lord says, for my own purposes. And so ask God, what is it that he wants you to focus on, to study more, and to go that direction. As I said before, one of the one of the times the answers that I received was to study more about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And 
I, I don't know exactly, I still don't know exactly why that answer, that impression came. But what I learned in my study is how many, how many so-called Christian academics, those who, who study Jesus and, and teach in the universities about Jesus, how so many of them are critical and are skeptical about Jesus. And that was, and particularly about his resurrection. And the resurrection is kind of, kind of the main point. Did, did Jesus really have the power to be resurrected? You know, if if he was resurrected, then everything else that he said is is easily understood to be true. But if he wasn't resurrected, then that kind of inserts a lot of doubt, a lot of questions about. Okay, did everything that Jesus say? Was he really Lord and God and Messiah? And anyways, I was just, I think for myself, I was just really shocked about how strong of a movement there is out there in society to pretend, you know, wolves in sheep clothing, essentially, to pretend that they are for Christ and are actually undermining Christ. And I've gotten a lot better at being able to discern between those who are really for Christ and those who are out to really kind of priestcraft, essentially, to, to put themselves up, put themselves up by placing doubts and criticisms about Jesus' resurrection into the hearts of believers. So there are those three questions. I hope that they help for you. Now, do it in any way, in any order that you want. Sometimes when I, when I pray, I'll ask all three of those questions, and I'll give myself maybe 15 to 30 seconds of just silence, waiting for an answer. And sometimes answers come, and sometimes they, they don't. So be patient with yourself, be kind with yourself, and to recognize, like President Nelson was talking about, that this is really a lifelong journey of being able to recognize the Spirit more fully in our lives, to feel the love of God more fully and frequently in our lives, and to have a better understanding of what God wants us to do. You know, when does God want us to stand still and watch His glory? And in other times, when, when does He want us to, to fight for His kingdom? When does He want us to use our agency? When does He want us to be like Nephi and say, whither shall I go find the, the ore to, to build a ship, you know? And that's, that's, a, that's a process. But in that process, let's never lose sight that this is a relationship, that God our Father is literally our Father in heaven. And so really be asking questions that have to do with that relationship and how to strengthen that relationship and I know that you will experience, and in a way that's best for you, that you'll be able to experience the love of God more fully in your life. Take care. Bye-bye.